Hey everybody, so you are looking at section 7.3 today, which is triangle similarity. Okay, and just like when we did triangle congruence, the first thing we said was that if we know all the pairs of sides are congruent, all the pairs of angles are congruent, we knew that our triangles were congruent. Well, then the next thing we learned was that there were several shortcuts for being able to prove that those triangles were congruent. We're going to look at the same thing here. In section 7.1, we said, okay, in order to prove that figures are similar, we had to know all the pairs of sides were proportional and all the pairs of angles were congruent. Well, now we're going to get some of those shortcuts. And if we look at our title up here with angle, angle, side, 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 and side, angle, side, some of those shortcuts are going to be very similar to what we had when we talked about congruence. When we look at the one on this slide, though, um, this is a new one and it's specific to similarity, okay? If we have triangles, so again, that these shortcuts only work for triangles, um, I had two pairs of angles congruent over here. Those are enough to know that my triangles are going to be similar, okay? So if I have two pairs of corresponding angles congruent, then that's enough to know that my triangles are going to be similar. Okay, so we're going to use angle angle similarity to shortcut that. The next two shortcuts that we have are our side 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 similarity and side angle side similarity. One thing that I want to point out is if you are using side 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 similarity, I want you to write side 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 with the similarity. Okay, S A S with the similarity symbol. If you do not write the similarity symbol, I am going to assume you are talking about congruence and they are different. All right. With side, side, side congruence, we said three pairs of sides were congruent, then we knew the triangles were congruent, okay? With side, side, side similarity, our three pairs of sides must be proportional. So AO, AB over ED should equal AC over DF, should equal BC over EF, okay? So just like we talked about. So we don't have to know anything about the angles with side, side, side similarity. We just have to know that all three pairs of sides are in proportion. Okay, side angle side similarity, similar to sides angle side congruence. Again, we've got our two pairs of sides and the included angle. This time, instead of my sides being congruent, my sides must be proportional. So AB has to be proportional to ED, which will equal BC over EF, okay? And then angle B and E, that angle between the two sides must be congruent. Okay, and that's enough to know that my triangles are congruent. So let's take a look at some of those examples. All right, we want to explain why these triangles are similar. Okay, so I'm telling you that they are similar. We're just figuring out why. And then write a similarity statement. So when we look here, notice that I have PT is parallel to SR. Okay, when these two sides are parallel, this should automatically bring back that parallel lines chapter in particular, our alternate interior angles. So if I look here, I know that angle T and angle S are congruent. So angle S is congruent to angle T, all right, because they're alternate interior angles, okay? If I look, I can use that same reasoning to say that angle P is congruent to angle R because, again, they are alternate interior angles. I don't have to say the third pair because we know my third angle theorem, but instead of doing two pairs of alternate interiors, I could have said that these two angles here were congruent um, because they're vertical angles. So by angle angle similarity, I know that triangle, and I'm going to start by naming this one. So I'm just going to say PQT. So PQT is congruent, not congruent, excuse me, is similar to triangle. Okay, P, angle P is congruent to angle R, so that's going to go first. Angle Q in this triangle is congruent to angle Q in this triangle. And T in this triangle is congruent to S in this triangle. All right, so this is my similarity statement, and this is my explanation for why my triangles are similar. All right, any questions, go ahead and write that down. Okay, we're still doing the same thing here. We want to verify that my two triangles are similar. So when I look at triangle PQR here, notice that it is isosceles. Okay, so two sides are four and the base is six. 
When I look over here, I also have an isosceles triangle. My two sides are six, my two legs are six, and the base is nine, okay? So that should help you kind of orient your triangle with itself, all right? So I wanna know, since I'm given sides, I'm not giving any angle measures, I'm not giving anything as parallel, just looking at side lengths, my goal is to use side, side, side similarity. So in order to do that, I need to know that all the sides are in proportion. So if I look at PQ, one of my isosceles ones, it's going to go with one of these isosceles. So it's going to be 4 over 6. I want to know whether or not that's equal to 4 over 6, which obviously those are going to be equal, okay, because we have isosceles triangles. So both of those should sides should be in the same proportion. So the question is, is our bases in the same proportion as well, which is going to be 6 over 9. So this is going to reduce to two-thirds. Obviously, these are equal, so this will reduce to two-thirds. But this also reduces to two-thirds, so this is good. So we can say that my triangle, uh, yeah, triangle, sorry, PQR is similar to triangle PRS because they give us the order kind of up here. And this is by side, 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 similarity. Again, you need to have the similarity symbol when you're using similarity, okay? If you don't have it, then you are talking about side, side, side congruence, which is very different. Those triangles are not congruent. They are similar. All right, so we're going to look here at our next set of triangles. We're looking at JKL and JMN. So again, I have side lengths, so I want to check to see if those are in proportion. This side here of JK is going to be 2. This side here, remember, JM is this whole side of the triangle, so this whole side length is 6. So I'm going to put 2 over 6. And I want to know whether or not that equals. I've got a 3 over here for my smaller triangle. And again, this whole side length is 9. So I'm going to do this. So I'm going to do 2 over 6. This is one third. Three over nine is also one third. So this is good right here. Now, I only have two pairs of sides proportional. So what I want to look is, can I show that any angles are congruent? Well, if I look here, both triangles are sharing angle J. So I know that angle J is going to be congruent to angle J. So that means that triangle JKL is similar to triangle JMN by side angle side similarity. Again, I've got the two sides proportional and the angle between them is congruent. All right. So again, any questions on that, go ahead and write those down. Okay. Next one, again, we're kind of in this same vein, is looking at why are these two triangles similar. So we're going to start there. Once again, I've got that these sides are parallel, so I have alternate interior angles here. So I know angle A is congruent to angle D, and I have C congruent to angle B. Okay, because they are alternate interior angles. All right. Or again, you could have also used that these are vertical angles, so that could give you your um, angle angle similarity. So we have two pairs of angles congruent. So I know triangle ABC is similar to triangle DBE by angle angle similarity. All right. Then the second part of the question is to find BE. Now that I know the triangles are similar, I can set up my proportion, okay? So I know that AB is first, and it's going to correspond to DB, okay? So I can put 36 over 54. That's going to equal, and I'm just going to go ahead and label BE as X because that's what I'm trying to find. So that's going to equal 54 over X. All right. So the next thing that I'm going to do is look at this, and since these are really big numbers, I know that I can simplify this fraction over here. So since they're so big, I want to start by simplifying. Okay, and when I look at these, both of these are actually divisible by 18. Okay, 36 is 18 times 2, 54 is 18 times 3. So instead of saying 54 over 36, I can say 2 thirds, which is much nicer to work with. 
All right, so I am going to cross multiply here and I'm gonna get 2x is equal to three times 54. So I'm gonna get 2x is equal to 162. And then I'm gonna divide that by two to get 81. Okay, so BE is gonna have a length of 81. Okay, go ahead, any questions? Write those down now. Okay, with this last example, yes, I know it's a proof. Yes, I know it's your favorite. All right, we are told that A is the midpoint of BC, D is the midpoint of BE. So we wanna prove that my triangles are congruent, okay? So first thing that we know, when we are given midpoints, we know that if A is the midpoint here, I know that these are congruent. If D is the midpoint here, I know that these are congruent. Remember that that's what it means to be a midpoint. So that is your definition of a midpoint, all right? Now, my next step here, I'm going from these two are congruent to they're equal. Well, anytime you're going back and forth between congruence and equals, remember that is going to be the definition of congruence. And you can say the definition of congruent segments or just the definition of congruence, either one, I'm fine with that. All right, let's take a look at the next step. It says BC equals BA plus AC. So here's BC equals BA plus AC. Again, this and the similar for the other side here, BE equals BD plus DE. This should be something at this point you are familiar with. That is your segment addition postulate. All right, well, look what we have here. We have that BA and AC are equal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take BA and I'm gonna plug it in here for AC since I know that they're equal. That's how I get BA plus BA. The same thing is gonna happen here. I know BD and I'm gonna plug that in for DE. I am plugging something in, so that means that I am substituting. All right, so BA again gets plugged in for AC, BD gets plugged in for um, DE. That's how I get to this step. All I'm doing with this next one is combining like terms or I'm simplifying and just saying BA plus BA is 2BA. So you can either write simplify here um, or you can put combining like terms. That works perfectly well. All right, so now look what happens. I am going to take both sides and divide it by BA to get two by itself. Same thing here, I'm gonna divide both sides by BD. That's how I'm gonna get my two by itself. Okay, so that's my division property. Now look at this, I have this fraction equals two and this fraction equals two. So that means that they are congruent to each other. Okay, so that is either substitution or transitive. Okay, so substitution would also work here. Again, substitution can work when we're talking about equality. Um, when we're talking about congruence, then it never works. It has to be transitive. But either one of those reasons will work here. Angle B congruent to angle B. You guys should be good with that at this point. That is your reflexive property. Now, we have said that this side here over this side is proportional to this side over this side. They're both two. All right, we've said that angle B is congruent to angle B. So we've got the si either side is proportional, the angle between is congruent. That means that our triangles are similar by side, angle, side, similarity. Okay, and I am not really worried about this little piece right here, don't worry about that. So just side, angle, side, similarity, okay? So again, if you have questions on that, I know with proofs it's difficult. Hopefully, once you see it, it makes sense. So we are bringing some proofs back with this section a little bit. Um, we're not going to hit them super hard. But again, there are certain steps in here that you should be able to do without a problem. You know, your definition of a midpoint, segment addition postulate, those are things that we've seen over and over. Um, so hopefully, once you look at it, it makes sense once you go back and read it. Um, again, any questions, please write those down. And I will see you guys in class. Have a great day.